For centuries, people have talked about miracles. Many religions believe in a higher power. Others use natural resources, modern medicine, meditations, and a wealth of other things. I believe there's truth in all of these methods. When I first met Kyle Daigle, I have to be honest, I really didn't understand what he actually meant to so many people. He's a chiropractor by trade, but he's really so much more. The way he walks into a room and lights up, the way he interacts with his staff, and of course, the way he provides so much hope for the people that he helps. While he walked us around the clinic and introduced us to some of his tools and things he used to treat his patients, I couldn't help but think of Star Trek and other sci-fi movies. What I learned about Kyle is miraculous and what he means to the people is so important. Dr. Kyle, super excited to talk to you, but you don't want to be Dr. Kyle. I'm Kyle. Just Kyle. That's what your patients call you. It's everybody here. So we've, uh, we've spent a lot of time uh, talking to uh, some of your, uh, your partners here and, and uh, your employees and uh, seems to be a really the same trend over and over again and talking about how um, you supply hope to so many people. We had an amazing opportunity to sit down with some of the people, some of the patients that Kyle had the pleasure of helping. Tell me, uh, what is it like to work here? Oh my gosh, crazy. Yes. <laughs> you never know what's gonna like walk through the door and what you're gonna see in a day. And, but it's also like the most fulfilling thing you could ever experience. The most exciting part is being able to see people come in who like, can't do the ordinary daily tasks that we take is like like for granted and helping them accomplish those goals. It's it's cool to be able to express those types of emotions with people too and be such a big part of a big part of their life. We are working with a guy named Tony. He has trimmers and he told me yesterday that the first thing that he wanted to kind of be able to do or something special for him would to be to drink a bottle of water. You got it. Go. 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 Good. Drink that whole thing. Finish it up. And today we got him drinking a bottle of water by himself. Now what, what is his story? And how, and what is he personally dealing with? So he actually had a brain injury which caused the tremors eight years ago. So he said that for eight years he has dealt with this and he's had trial and error in all these different places and finally he gets to come here and he, we're seeing results and that's what he's asked for for all this time so dr kyle does a lot of miracle work and sometimes i believe it's god's work when somebody says chiropractor to me um i always think get your back cracked get your neck aligned things like that um when, when you went into that field was there was there a deeper understanding that you wanted to do more with what people would say is normal chiropractic care. I was gonna be a medical doctor and um, I, I read textbooks and I started reading textbooks and I read when I was at LSU, I was reading the biochemistry textbook 
And that's actually how vitamins and minerals actually run your whole biochemical system. And from that component, I just asked the question, why? And I was like, you know, why aren't people actually looking at underlying factors? Like, what if someone has a nutritional deficiency? Maybe that could be why this person has this issue. I learned about Dr. Kyle because I go to Palmer College of Chiropractic and when it came time to pick an intern, a preceptor, I just went through the data, the database, and his name was in it. Never heard anything about him, had no idea this place even existed, or that there was even any reason people from all over the world would travel to Lake Charles. And then, yeah, that, I reached out and asked if I could come intern, and he said, yeah. Tell me a little bit about Dr. Powell. He's so wild, man. <laughs> um, he's an interesting character, never stops. I've only seen him eat twice since I've been here in the past month. Um, I don't really know how he sleeps. Like, he's just running all over the place. He's just always looking for something to do. My first thought was like, there's no way. Like, there's no way this stuff can possibly work. From the outside, it looks like a bunch of red lights being shined into people's faces. Um, it looks like just like vibration massage. So what these lasers do is they increase blood flow. So what we really do is if you can increase blood, if you can increase blood flow, you can increase function. And so one of the things that's happening in the brain is that there's diminished blood flow. Like if you check someone's pulse, their oxygen level, it might be 94, 95. It should be 99, you know, or 98 at least. And what we've been able to do is find that we can trace arteries that are supplying the brain or supplying organs or supplying muscle groups or nerves and we can literally put a laser over that area and we improve blood flow and then we improve function. You know, it doesn't actually look like it works and from the outside it's still crazy how it does until you actually see it work and you get to watch the process happening. Maybe if they're feeling a little bit hopeless, maybe this could be their last chance to truly find some healing. They're, they're hanging on this little threshold to where they've been defeated most of their entire life or they've been defeated in most of what type of therapy interventions they've been at, but they just have this slight little hope that maybe this could be the next thing. When we first started, there was probably 100,000 dots all over every single square inch of the walls. We had just little back vibrations and presenter laser lights. Yeah, that was pretty much all we had. We were getting results, like insane results that everyone else just wasn't getting. We were having people come in and gurneys and people coming in in wheelchairs and having some patients being able to pull themselves up and stand up for the first time and in years after having a definite diagnosis that they probably never would again. Being able to help people you know feel their toes again after never feeling them for X amount of time. Tell me about that experience when uh, somebody comes in in a wheelchair and they've been told they'll never walk or they'll never stand or put on their own shoes. Tell me about that. That's a big sighting. It is because on the inside, you know, we believe in ourselves, but it's having them, it's almost like you have to see it to believe it type stuff. Whenever they first come in, you know, a lot of them, they've been told by so many people that, you know, you're crazy for even coming here and you've already been told this X diagnosis or this X outcome. It's almost like they're just searching for that last hope. And when they come in and let's say we have a spinal cord patient that has been told that you know you're never gonna walk again and for them to be able to just even wiggle the toe the little spark in them it's it's incredible feeling and it's more just it's a very rewarding feeling working for it because all we want to do is help these people out to the best ability that we can say hello my name is guy and i'm hello my name is guy i'm simply okay good job and are you excited to be here yeah. Yes. Are you excited to go back home though? Mm, not very. Not really? Good. Mm. Okay. I definitely see it in the future being something like that to where it's just going to take off and everyone's going to have it involved in different clinics. Um, so it's exciting to see the growing stages. I do what I do because I love to watch people, like, I love to see people smile. I like to be able to watch someone be able to literally move their leg. I like to be able to watch someone literally have their wife back, their child back. Um, yeah, I mean, I just, I really, I don't like people, so I like to see people suffer. And that's what gets me, kind of hits me really hard. And when I see a child who has been labeled something and the parent 
doesn't accept that label and they know there's something underneath and it's my job to let that parent know that I'm going to bring that out of their kid. When you came in and uh, Dr. Kyle did testing, what exactly was your diagnosis? At the time I was diagnosed with POTS and what was happening was as long as I was lying down, my heart rate, I felt fine, I wasn't dizzy. But the second I would sit up in bed, I would immediately get dizzy and upon sanding the heart rate, my heart rate would go up you know, extremely high. For me, it would go into the 170s, sometimes 180s. It got to the point where my entire left side of my body went numb. Felt like I was having a heart attack. The whole time, Trey's like, we need to go see Kyle. <laughs> Kyle said, I bet it's mold. It was like a light bulb kind of went off because we pretty much lost our home to the hurricane and we had to do, my husband and I had to do all the demo work ourselves. Everything that we tried to save, we put in a storage container, which was completely engulfed in mold. About three months prior to this episode, we had just emptied out the storage container that was just completely encapsulated with mold. So at the hospital, they were like, yeah, everything's fine. We don't know what's going on. Like you seem healthy. They put me on beta blockers and I actually already have low blood pressure or, you know, decent blood pressure which was making my blood pressure bottom out. Immediately, I got out of the hospital May 31st. On June 1st, I was here in Kyle's office. Sure enough, I did all the tests and everything, and I had, I think, six different species or types of mold strains, and they were all really high. He's made it to where my heart rate, It we actually tested it today. It only like rose six beats per minute from sitting to standing. So tell me, you know, having someone uh, like Dr. Kyle that can solve some of these things. Oh my, she's like been, me and my husband, we say like he's like one of the biggest blessings, like answered prayers for us. Yeah. Because I mean, I thought, I'm gonna cry. I thought I was gonna die <laughs> at one point. Um, I didn't think I was gonna cry. <laughs> I, it's silly now, but <clears throat> I went in my notes on my phone. And I wrote letters to my kids and my husband because they were nights I didn't think I was going to wake up the next morning. That's how sick I was. So Cole, he, I feel like he saved my life. What would you tell anybody else that sees this, that has maybe some of the similar conditions or some of the uh, similar symptoms? There is success. There is hope because you can, you can be healed from it have saved people's lives yes yeah you know I'd say you know I have a really cool case um, that I got this call one day and it was a kid it was a kid's father and the kid's dad tells me says you know my son has 48 hours to live and um, he's like would you be willing to take this child on my kids and I'm like yeah absolutely I'll take him on and he's like look this is a severe case he's like this kid's gonna die and I'm like yeah, you know, I think I can probably go do something. I was like, what are the expectations? He goes, he wants to make it to his birthday. I was like, how long is that? He goes, it's next month. I'm like, what kind of condition? He goes, oh, he's, they literally told us he's going to die in 48 hours. So I have an amazing team. Um, I take no credit. I give it all to my team. My team is unbelievable. And so I get my whole staff together. I'm like, all right, guys, um, they're going to send us this kid. Uh, they gave him 48 hours to live. Um... We're going to help them out. And so my team's like, you're crazy. And I'm like, you know, I'm always going to take typically a lot of wild cases on. Yeah, I get this kid. And first thing I asked him when I got him uh, was, what is our expectations, our goals? And that's kind of my big thing with everything I work with. I want to know, you know, if you're going to come see me, tell me what's, what you really want. And he's like, look, I really just want to be able to make it to my favorite holiday, which was Thanksgiving. And he wants to make it to his 17th birthday. And um, then... I made this kid literally sign an autograph because I'm like, look, what you're going to do is you're going you're to sign this piece of paper for me. He said, why? And I was like, because you're going to make it. He goes, you believe so? I'm like, do you think you could do it? He said, I think I could do it. I'm like, well, look, if you believe it, then I believe it. It's just we're going we're gonna to make it happen. And the dad's kind of like looking at me and I'm like, look, hey, he, he thinks he's going to do it. I'm willing. I'm going to do everything I can. I was like, I'll be up here all night long if I have to. And guess what happened? This kid made it to his 17th birthday. He made it to Thanksgiving and he did pass. Uh, but the cool thing is, is that I had 48 hours to live. 
or give him the lift, and then we were able to push it back over a month. One thing that you can't replace is time, and, and but also we're called um, as a people uh, to help other people, and so what you're doing is incredibly important. Raising children is incredibly important too, being with your family, uh, but it's just great that you have a support system uh, that understands the importance of what you're bringing to not just Lake Charles or Louisiana, the whole world. Um, and uh, sounds like a movement. I'm, I'm incredibly impressed with what you built. Um, and I think, uh, you know, saving people's lives, healing people is, it's, it's a gift, you know, and, and it's something that, that you obviously do very well. Yeah, well, hey, you know, every day my affirmation is to just be a vessel. And I think that's probably one of the reasons why that I've made the success that I have is that I'm just here witnessing. That's awesome. All right, you gotta give me some scoop on Kyle, okay? I gotta, I gotta hear. Tell me, somebody tell me a funny story of something. He wears skinny jeans every day. <laughs> That's her favorite. That's her favorite. Oh, oh we're gonna have That's to talk. So about that. funny. Yeah. yeah, yeah. He wears them well though. He does get. He, he does. Uh, get <laughs> no comment. Not gonna hate on too no much. No comment. <laughs> oh, these aren't skinny jeans. <laughs> She's no. coming after you and Doctor Kyle. Jeez. Little. Little work. Yeah.